Let's go live now to the Northern Territory. Joining me is Independent MP Robin Lamley. Robin, you've been calling for a, a youth curfew for a long time. You were laughed off for a lot of that time by Labor. What's your reaction now to see it put in place? And it seems to be working. Well, it is working, Kieran. It's taken many, many years for us to get to this point. And as you said, over the years that I've been advocating for a youth curfew, this Labor government that's been in power for almost eight years has systematically rejected it, very aggressively rejected it, and uh, in doing so has, has made a, a meal of uh, belittling me and, and uh, dismissing any calls that I've made to, uh, to suggest that this could be an option. So what we're seeing on the streets at the, of Alice Springs over the last eight days that the curfew has been in practice is, is a change for the positive. When you look at the, the Chief Minister and her approach, Eva Lawler versus her predecessors, have you noticed a, a real shift there? Is it someone taking this issue on more seriously? I think so, Kieran. Eva Lawler has uh, landed in the position of Chief Minister after the last Chief Minister was forced to fall on her sword after a, a sordid controversy. But Eva has um, opened her mind and uh, uh, probably annoyed and upset a lot of her uh, Cabinet colleagues by going down this particular track of introducing a youth curfew. But I think Eva realises that this is one of the last options on the table, that uh, we are in desperate times here and we needed something different and new, which is what I've been advocating for for many years. So for her to suddenly uh, turn the tables and, and announce a youth curfew last last Wednesday and implement it immediately came as quite a shock to me uh, and uh, really uh, beggars uh, belief that uh, it's taken so long after years of them denying there was even a problem that they have gone mm. down this path. But we do welcome it, Kieran. Well, and the Chief Kieran, Minister would have had to stare down a some of the still internal early days. critics. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't she? Because Absolutely. I, I just read your statement today where you've quoted Chancy Peake uh, one of the senior figures in the government, and he he has said in the past that it's madness. A, a, a youth curfew is like a, treating young people like a dog. Uh, that is a disgrace. That's that's the language that he used. Now his chief minister's putting it in, and as you said, it's given some respite to the police. It has. Chancy Paik is now the Deputy Chief Minister. He's now the Attorney General. And he's been on the record many, many times rubbishing and dismissing the, the idea of a youth curfew. And uh, I put out a press release to that effect yesterday, as has the former Minister responsible for child protection. She's been very dismissive of it. So it's, uh, it's a big change. It's a big backflip by this government government to implement a youth curfew. But I do commend Eva Lawler, the new Chief Minister, for going down this track. And people in Alice Springs are embracing it. Uh, I've, I've had so many emails and calls just this morning saying it's working, it's making a difference. Even if it is a temporary measure, a, a short-term fix, this is what we need yeah. to um, put a line in the sand, to, to, to be a circuit breaker for the level of violence that we've been seeing in recent times. And give our viewers a sense of the, the more deep-seated issues that we're talking about. We heard Matt Cunningham's report where a group of students are being sent out of Alice to, to finish, uh, to continue their schooling because of those, those uh, quote, uh, traditional paybacks. That's obviously a longer-term and much deeper issue that needs to be addressed if this is cyclical, this sort of, this sort of violence. Well, look, I'm not sure about the whole payback issue. I mean, I've been in, in Alice Springs, a relative, resident of this town for 30 years, and payback was not necessarily like what we're seeing payback is on the streets of Alice Springs at the moment. Um, it's usually, from my knowledge, carried out in very um, private and, and uh, not public circumstances. What we saw in Alice Springs last Tuesday was a riot like we've never seen before outside the Todd Tavern, one of our oldest pub in Alice Springs. Uh, so things have changed and I think the goalposts have changed around what's, what uh, people call something like 
payback in Alice Springs. But look, mm-hmm. we do know that over the last five to 10 years, there has been an increasing level of violence in our community. And that is playing out amongst young people. I, I think we all acknowledge that social media plays a big part in that. And, and we're seeing the yeah. chief minister, the new chief minister getting on board uh, with the, um, the, the, the trying to shut down social media being used as a way to gloat and boast about, about criminal activity. But look, Alice Springs has has always had a crime problem, but our level of crime is above and beyond what you see probably anywhere else in in the Northern Territory. I think in last year during budget estimates, it came about that Alice Springs has 20% more incidences of crime than the Darwin um, local government area. We, and, and we've got a population of, of about a third of that, uh, of Darwin. So you're talking about very high levels of crime to begin with, which have only escalated in recent times. So this curfew is very positive. There's some early, very positive signs that this could make a real difference to our town. It's due to finish on Wednesday, but I think it will be okay. extended. I heard Eva Lawler on radio this morning, our Chief Minister, we will, uh, kind we'll of indicating that, yeah. that it will continue. Independent MP Robin Lamley, thanks for joining us from Alice Springs. Appreciate it. My pleasure.